a Wikivide Documentaries production. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Enjoy. Leo Ryan Leo Joseph Ryan Jr. was an American teacher and politician. A member of the Democratic Party, he served as the U.S. Representative from California's 11th Congressional District from 1973 until his assassination as part of the Jonestown Massacre in 1978. After the Watts Riots of 1965, Assemblyman Ryan took a job as a substitute school teacher to investigate and document conditions in the area. In 1970, he decided to investigate the conditions of California prisons. While presiding as chairman of the Assembly Committee that oversee or prison reform, he used a pseudonym to enter Folsom Prison as an inmate. During his time in Congress, Ryan traveled to Newfoundland to investigate the practice of seal hunting. He was also famous for vocal criticism of the lack of congressional oversight of the Central Intelligence Agency, and authored the Hughes-Ryan Amendment. Passed in 1974, Ryan was shot and killed at Nair Strip in Guyana in November 1978 while his party was attempting to escape a dangerous situation. He had traveled to Guyana to investigate claims that people were being held against their will at the People's Temple Jonestown settlement. Ryan was killed the same day of the mass suicide, which occurred just 11 days after he was re-elected for a fourth term. He was the second sitting member of the U.S. House of Representatives to have been assassinated in office, the first being James M. Hines in 1868. He was awarded the Congressional Gold Medal posthumously in 1983. Early Life and Education Ryan was born in Lincoln, Nebraska. Throughout his early life, his family moved frequently through Illinois, Florida, New York, Wisconsin, and Massachusetts. He graduated from Campion Jesuit High School in Prairie du Chien, Wisconsin, in 1943. He then received V-12 officer training at Bates College and served with the United States Navy from 1943 to 1946 as a submariner. Ryan graduated from Nebraska's Creighton University with a BA in 1949 and an MS in 1951. He served as a teacher, school administrator and South San Francisco City Councilman from 1956 to 1962. He taught English at Cappuccino High School and chaperoned the marching band in 1961 to Washington, D.C. to participate in President John F. Kennedy's inaugural parade. Ryan was inspired by Kennedy's call to service in his inaugural address, and decided to run for higher office. State of California In 1962, Ryan was elected mayor of South San Francisco. He served less than a year as mayor, before taking a seat in the California State Assembly's 27th district, winning his assembly race by a margin of 20,000 votes. He had previously run for the State Assembly's 25th District in 1958, but lost to Republican Louis Francis. Ryan served as a delegate to the Democratic National Convention in 1964 and 1968, and he held his Assembly seat through 1972, when he was elected to the United States House of Representatives. He was successively elected three more times to the United States Congress. U.S. Congresswoman and former California State Senator and Ryan A. Jackie Spire described Ryan's style of investigation as experiential legislating. After the Watts Riots of 1965, Assemblyman Ryan went to the area and took a job as a substitute school teacher to investigate and document conditions in the area. In 1970, using a pseudonym, Ryan had himself arrested, detained, and strip-searched to investigate conditions in the California prison system. He stayed as an inmate for 10 days in the Folsom Prison, while presiding as chairman on the Assembly Committee that oversee or prison reform. As a California Assemblyman, Ryan also served as the chairman of legislative subcommittee hearings and presided over hearings involving his later successor as Congressman. Tom Lantos Ryan pushed through important educational policies in California and authored what came to be known as the Ryan Act which established an independent regulatory commission to monitor educational credentialing in the state. United States Congress During his time in Congress, Ryan went to Newfoundland with James Jeffords to investigate the inhumane killing of seals, and he was famous for vocal criticism of the lack of congressional oversight of the Central Intelligence Agency, authoring the Hughes-Ryan Amendment. 
which would have required extensive CIA notification of Congress about planned covert operations. Congressman Ryan once told Dick Cheney that leaking a state secret was an appropriate way for a member of Congress to block an ill-conceived operation. Ryan supported Patricia Hearst, and along with Senator S.I. Hayakawa, delivered Hearst's application for a presidential commutation to the pardon attorney. People's Temple In 1978, Reports regarding widespread abuse and human rights violations in Jonestown among the People's Temple, led by cult leader Jim Jones, began to filter out of the organization's Guyana enclaves. Ryan was friends with the father of former Temple member Bob Houston, whose mutilated body was found near train tracks on October 5, 1976, three days after a taped telephone conversation with Houston's ex-wife in which leaving the temple was discussed. Ryan's interest was further aroused by the custody battle between the leader of a concerned relatives group, Timothy Stun, and Jones following a congressional white paper written by Stun detailing the events. Ryan was one of 91 congressmen to write Guyanese Prime Minister Forbes Burnham on Stun's behalf. Later, after reading an article in the San Francisco Examiner, Ryan declared his intention to go to Jonestown an agricultural commune in Guyana, where Jim Jones and roughly 1,000 temple members resided. Ryan's choice was also influenced both by the Concerned Relatives group, which consisted primarily of Californians, as were most temple members, and by his own characteristic distaste for social injustice. According to the San Francisco Chronicle, while investigating the events, the United States Department of State repeatedly stonewalled Ryan's attempts to find out what was going on in Jonestown, and told him that everything was fine. The State Department characterized possible action by the United States government in Guyana against Jonestown as creating a potential legal controversy, but Ryan at least partially rejected this viewpoint. In a later article in the Chronicle, Ryan was described as having bucked the local Democratic establishment and the Jimmy Carter administration's State Department in order to prepare for his own investigation. Travels to Jonestown On November 1, 1978, Ryan announced that he would visit Jonestown. He did so as part of a government investigation and received permission and government funds to do so. He made the journey in his role as chairman of a congressional subcommittee with jurisdiction over U.S. citizens living in foreign countries. He asked the other members of his Bay Area congressional delegation to join him on the investigation to Jonestown, but they all declined his invitation. Ryan had also asked his friend, Indiana congressman and future vice president Dan Quayle, to accompany him Quayle had served with Ryan on the government operations committee but Quayle was unable to go on the trip, while the party was initially planned to consist of only a few members of the congressman's staff and press as part of the congressional delegation. Once the media learned of the trip the entourage ballooned to include, among others, concerned relatives of Temple members. Congressman Ryan traveled to Jonestown with 17 Bay Area relatives of People's Temple members, several newspaper reporters and an NBC TV team. When the legal counsel for Jones attempted to impose several restrictive conditions on the visit, Ryan responded that he would be traveling to Jonestown whether Jones permitted it or not. Ryan's stated position was that a settlement deep in the bush might be reasonably run on authoritarian lines. However, residents of the settlement must be allowed to come and go as they pleased. He further asserted that if the situation had become a gulag, he would do everything he could to free the captives. Jungle Ambush and Assassination On November 14, according to the Foreign Affairs Committee report, Ryan left Washington and arrived in Georgetown. The capital of Guyana located 150 miles away from Jonestown, with his congressional delegation of government officials, media representatives, and some members of the concerned relatives. That night the delegation stayed at a local hotel where, despite confirmed reservations, most of the rooms had been cancelled and reassigned, leaving the delegation sleeping in the lobby. For three days, Ryan continued negotiation with Jonas legal counsel and held perfunctory meetings with embassy personnel and Guyanese officials. While in Georgetown, Ryan visited the temple's Georgetown headquarters in the suburb of Lamaha Gardens. Ryan asked to speak to Jones by radio. Sharon Amos, the highest-ranking temple member present, told Ryan that he could not, because his present visit was unscheduled. 
On November 17, Ryan's aide Jackie Spire, the United States Embassy Deputy Chief of Mission Richard Dwyer, a Guyanese Ministry of Information officer, nine journalists, and four concerned relatives representatives of the delegation boarded a small plane for the flight to an airfield at Port Kajima a few miles outside of Jonestown. At first, only the Temple Legal Council was allowed off the plane, but eventually the entire entourage was allowed in. Initially, the welcome at Jonestown was warm, but Temple member Van and Gosney handed a note to NBC correspondent Don Harris which stated, Please help me get out of Jonestown listing himself and Temple member Monica Bagaby. That night, the media and the delegation were returned to the airfield for accommodations following Jones's refusal to allow them to stay the night. The rest of the group remained. The next morning, Rian, Spire, and Dwyer all continued their interviews, and in the morning met a woman who secretly expressed her wish to leave Jonestown with her family and another family. Around 11 a.m. local time, the media and the delegation returned and took part in interviewing People's Temple members. Around 3 p.m. 14 Temple defectors, and Larry Layton posing as a defector, boarded a truck and were taken to the airstrip, with Ryan wishing to stay another night, to assist any others that wished to leave. Shortly thereafter, a failed knife attack on Congressman Ryan occurred while he was arbitrating a family dispute on leaving. Against Ryan's protests, Deputy Chief of Mission Dwyer ordered Ryan to leave, but he promised to return later to address the dispute. The entire group left Jonestown, and arrived at the Kajima airstrip by 4.45 p.m. local time. Their exit transport planes, a twin-engine Otter and a Cessna, did not arrive until 5.10 p.m. The smaller six-seat Cessna was just taxiing to the end of the runway when one of its occupants, Larry Layton, opened fire on those inside, wounding several. Concurrently, several other People's Temple members who had escorted the group out began to open fire on the transport plane, killing Congressman Rian, three journalists and a defecting Temple member, while wounding nine others, including Spire. The gunman riddled Congressman Ryan's body with bullets before shooting him in the face. The passengers on the Cessna subdued Larry Layton and the surviving people on both planes fled into nearby fields during and after the attack that afternoon. Before the news became public, the wife of Ryan's aide, William Holsinger, received three threatening phone calls. The caller allegedly stated, Tell your husband that his meal ticket just had his brains blown out, and he better be careful. The Holsingers then fled to Lake Tahoe and later to a ranch in Houston. They never returned to San Francisco. Following its takeoff, the Cessna radioed in a report of the attack, and the U.S. Ambassador, John R. Burke, went to the residence of Prime Minister Forbes Burnham. It was not until the next morning that the Guyanese army could cut through the jungle and reach Jonestown. They discovered 909 of its inhabitants dead. They died in what the United States House of Representatives described as a mass suicide slash murder ritual. Conviction of Larry Layton Larry Layton, brother of author and former People's Temple member Deborah Layton, was convicted in 1986 of conspiracy in the murder of Leah Ryan. Temple defectors boarding the truck to Port Kajima warned about Larry Layton that, Terry's no way he's a defector. He's too close to Jones. Layton was the only former People's Temple member to be tried in the United States for criminal acts relating to the murders at Jonestown. He was convicted on four different murder-related counts. On March 3, 1987, Layton was sentenced to concurrent sentences of life in prison for aiding and abetting the murder of Congressman Leo Rian, conspiracy to murder an internationally protected person, Richard Dwyer, Deputy Chief of Mission for the United States in the Republic of Guyana, as well as 15 years in prison on other related counts. At that time, he was eligible for parole in five years. On June 3, 1987, Layton's motion to set aside the conviction, on the ground that he was denied the effective assistance of counsel during his second trial, was denied by the United States District Court of the Northern District of California. After spending 18 years in prison, Layton was released from custody in April 2002. Burial Leo Ryan's body was returned to the United States and interred at Golden Gate National Cemetery in San Bruno, California. The official Congressional Memorial Services for Ryan were compiled into a book, 
Leo J. Ryan Memorial Services held in the House of Representatives and Senate of the U.S. together with remarks. Ryan's younger sister Shannon said she was surprised both by the number of supporters that attended the funeral, and by the outgrowth of real, honest sorrow. Daughters Shannon Jo Ryan, Ryan's eldest daughter, joined the Rajneesh movement. After the Bhagawan moved to Oregon in 1981, she joined his commune, which became known as Rajneeshpuram taking the name Maamrita Pritam. By December 1982 she had married another member, who also lived, at the commune. Patricia Ryan received her master's in public administration from the George Washington University in Washington, D.C., and later served until her retirement as executive director of the California Mental Health Directors Association. During the 1980s, she became involved as a volunteer and eventually served as president of the board of the National Cult Awareness Network. Erin Ryan went to University of California's Hastings School of Law, afterward working until 1992 as an intelligence analyst for the Central Intelligence Agency. She next worked in New York as a pastry chef for eight years. In 2000, Erin Ryan joined California Senator Jackie Spire in politics, working as her aide. Anniversaries On the 25th anniversary of his death, a special memorial tribute was held in his honor in Foster City, California. Ryan's family and friends, including his three daughters and Jackie Spire, attended. The San Francisco Chronicle reported that, over and over today, people described a great man who continually exceeded his constituents' expectations. Near the end of the memorial service, parents of those who had died in Jonestown stood to honor and thank Congressman Ryan for giving his life while trying to save their children. After the service ended, mounted police escorting the family and friends into Foster City's Leo J. Ryan Memorial Park. A wreath was laid next to a commemorative rock that honors Ryan. The same year, his daughter Erin Ryan, an aide to Spire, attended a memorial for those who died at Jonestown, held at the Evergreen Cemetery in Oakland. On the anniversary of Congressman Ryan's death, Jackie Spire and Patricia Ryan, his daughter and friend, visit his grave at the Golden Gate National Cemetery. For the 30th anniversary, U.S. Congresswoman Jackie Spire sponsored a bill to designate the United States Postal Service facility at 210 South Ellsworth Avenue in San Mateo, California, as the Leo J. Ryan Post Office Building. President George W. Bush signed it into law on October 21, 2008. On November 17, 2008, Jackie Spire spoke at the dedication ceremony at the post office. In part, she said, there are those still, 30 years after his passing who question his motives, or the wisdom of his actions. But criticism was just fine with Leo. Leo Ryan never did anything, because he thought it would make him popular. He was more interested in doing what he knew was right. Brought to you by Wikivideo Documentaries. Would you like to know more?